Hello everybody, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, Bachelor podcaster, uh, former Bachelor lead, star of Bachelorette, Bachelor Winter Games, Bachelor in Paradise, and Special Forces Season 2, which we'll have that video up next, Nick Vial apologizes for spreading a rumor on his show. We're going to get to the full apology in a second. We're going to get you caught up on what he said that led up to the apology, what his producer said, and all that jazz. Do me a solid, follow me on Instagram, at Neils, I got stand-up shows coming up. Huntington Beach, August 17th. Seattle, August 24th. Those tickets are available right down below. We're going to be doing a bunch of press for them, so we hope you guys can join us in those markets or tag a friend who lives there and also patreon.com slash Dave Neal. We will be sharing our unverified yet very probable news that there is a bachelor couple that has broken up. That information is only on the membership community until that bachelor couple decides to release a statement. So if you want that tea, go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal. It will be live at the 10 a.m. hour talking about it every afternoon. Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast will have additional entertainment news. All right. So here's how it went down, right? I'm going to give you the quickest, fastest rundown of what went down. Here is what uh, Nick's producer said. Now, we're going to get to Nick's apology. None of this is verified. People say, why do you keep sharing things if, they don't, if they're unverified? Because the cat's out of the bag. You need to know what was said in order to understand the apology. None of this is verified. These are kids' gloves I've put on. If you can't handle and don't have the critical thinking skills to handle that none of this is verified, then that's on you and you've got bigger issues. And the DM said, so apparently... His wife died in 2017, and he was having an affair with another woman at work before she died, then lost his job with the... So there's Andrew Spencer, unfortunately caught in the crossfires because he didn't ask to be a part of this mess. So these are unverified DMs sent to the producer. ...company because he left an inappropriate voicemail for a woman at work and accidentally got sent to the whole company. My dad says he's a slime ball. Who's got that voicemail? We need the voicemail. We need the voicemail. And since then, usually when something is unearthed, whether it's verified or unverified, if it's true, usually other sources will come out and verify and say, yeah, and this is why it's good to do the verification behind the scenes because you don't want to make a whole story about someone deflating footballs to then find out that they didn't really defate, deflate footballs. The ideal gas law actually made the PSI in footballs lower because the temperature when they were measured versus when they were deflated were completely different. What I'm saying is everyone thinks Tom Brady's guilty of deflating footballs when it's been proven over and over again that he didn't do it because you only remember the initial story. That's why you have to handle these stories gently. Well, Reality Steve was pressuring Nick to apologize. Here's what Reality Steve had to say about Nick's hypocrisy in sharing, in sharing a damaging unverified rumor about an uh, a, uh, a older gentleman. I haven't even approved him. of that. Okay, go ahead. So this was like you got this, a message right, so we already played it she got the message and, that Gary, and nick says he didn't even approve of this him or like whatever so it's like the, the dads are all around the same it's his job with the company because he left an inappropriate voicemail for okay so we got that part already we covered that here's what nick said or, sorry here's what reality steve said oh nick was skeptical the whole time of this email which is fine the problem is he allowed it in the first place and some people are going to so Obviously, Reality Steve had then commented at the five-minute mark that this is the exact thing that Nick chastised Reality Steve for because it's damaging to the person, the victim, really, of the rumor. I can tell you this much, and I know I'm saying this. So this is several years earlier when Nick had, had Reality Steve on and berated him. Forget, forget, the show has done things that affected my life negatively. You have done things that affected my life negatively. And if I were to look back and, and put a value on that, you have probably caused more personal stress in my life than the show has. And as we know now, actually, Reality Steve's cleaned up the way he does his reporting. And you could probably argue that random commenters on Reddit and social media do more damage. But it used to be that like Reality Steve would curate a lot of the rumors and a lot of the behind the scenes dealings. And now there's forums that kind of do that. The Demois, the, ba the Bachelor subreddit. The different accounts are the ones sharing the rumors. And even, hey, even accounts like me, if there's a rumor out there, we talk about it. 
I just hope, like I say, that people have enough critical thinking skills to understand when we say something does isn't vetted, when we say something, you know, that, that, that you can understand what we're talking about. Now, this is heavier, though. This is heavier. This is a big deal. You, the cat's out of the bag to accuse someone who's about to go on a show about love and about connection and all these things the day they're about to go on the show to accuse them of cheating on their late wife, their wife that has since passed away. So that's a heavy, heavy accusation. Here's the apology from Nick. I think so, yeah. yeah. Before we get into Basher T, I do want to uh, speak on last week. Last week, our dear correspondent, Allie, was DM'd a message about uh, a bit of a rumor. And uh, typically on this show, uh, if you've listened at all, we, we tend to try to fall. This is a this is a boundary we've set for ourselves on this show that we didn't enforce last week. But typically, we don't like to speak on uh, rumors or things that are on the internet. I know, you know, a lot of people like to speak on blind items and things like that. We we are a show that typically does not like to do that, just because it can be dangerous to speak on that. Nevertheless, we did not enforce that boundary last week, and we, um, you know, discussed a potential rumor about a new newer member of of Bachelor Nation and. Despite disagreeing uh, with the rumor, nevertheless, you know, it's my show, so I should have, I should have made sure that that didn't make the final cut. So for the person involved, we, we apologize. And for anyone listening, just know we will, we will work on enforcing that boundary going forward. Uh, just because, you know, like you said, you know, a lot of people, a lot of shows will like to talk about that kind of stuff. Generally speaking, I, I, do, I think it can be a, a little dangerous just because there's so many uh, unverified rumors about people out there. And and, and the question is, is that a jab at reality, Steve, or maybe at me saying a lot of people like to discuss these types of rumors, which I actually disagree with. I don't think there are too many shows that are discussing rumors like this, but also you have to remember they weren't discussing a blind item rumor. They broke the blind item rumor story. So if Dumois posts a blind item that says Victoria Fuller and Greg Grippo have broken up, I think you can talk about that. It's already out there. The moral issue is the person that released that that without the sensitivity of knowing what their sources were. That's the moral issue. And everyone gets things wrong all the time. I apologized kind of recently for uh, for a story that I I didn't like that I, I didn't, I don't know, maybe for, further uh, solidify my sources um, or at least know that I wasn't going to be able to, like, I, like knowing that it was damaging even if I had the right source. Do you know what I mean? And here, they don't even have... Uh, any verification of their source whatsoever. And to be quite honest, I think the producer, or I guess he calls her a correspondent, Allie, should have chimed in with her own apology as well. Just to say, look, I need, you know, like, she needs to do a better job. Like, it, Buck stops with Nick, absolutely. As he said, it's a good apology. Is it an A plus? It's a solid A. It's an A apology. He said, even though... I was surprised by this and defended him. The buck stops with me. I should have not let that in the final cut. Absolutely, 100%. That's why his name's on the show. That's why he makes the big bucks there, right? And that's why he does the sponsor reads. That's why the book sitting next to him is his book because it's his show. Absolutely. Uh, so, But good apology. Good apology and good on him for covering it. I was kind of 50-50 on whether or not he would address it. But I think you know this hit critical mass where people said, look, this is in clear violation of standards that you said have hurt you in the past. And it's one of those things, hurt people, hurt people. They did the thing they didn't like. And maybe they'll have a little compassion for the the struggle. Like There's something that happens when you have this type of knowledge that you want to share it. It solidifies your position in the community. So I, I this might sound like I'm reading too deeply into it, but I guess the my guess is that there's a friendly competition between the producers to see who's going to be like the better producer. And the fact that she got this information, uh, Ali here, correspondent Ali, who sits on the left, the fact that she got this information was probably like, there was probably this feeling of, uh, joy and sort of, it's a sinister, it's a sinister world we live in when we know something and we uh, feel like we've got that info and uh, I can relate and I understand and I don't hold any ill will or judgment on them. It just, it just does lower the quality of the moral fiber of the show until it's proven 
to to have improved. That's just what happened. Same thing happened with Reality Steve. When he got his story wrong, he said, oh my gosh, I'm going to need to be airtight with my stories in the future, not report things unless I have multiple sources. He calls the sources, gets them on the phone. Like if a source isn't willing to get on the phone and talk, if they're not, you don't have to air who your source is, but you need to know they're a real person. So if Allie had this source, let's call her Jane Doe. If Allie says, hey, Jane Doe, I believe you, but in order for me to share this because it's really damaging, can we do a FaceTime call where you share this with me. I won't reveal your name, but can we just talk in person? Just find out that that is Jane Doe and not, you know, uh, uh, you know, Blaine Foe and, you know, is some random dude pretending to be somebody else or whatever. If they can't at least get on the phone with you to share their source, then they don't even believe it themselves. Yes, it can be fun to discuss the possibilities, but, you know, if it's, if, if these rumors aren't true, it can be uh, hard on the people involved. And I certainly, I know what that feels like. So again, to the person involved, uh, we certainly hope it's not true, and regardless, uh, apologetic for platforming it at all. And I, underst- I understand the strategy of not mentioning the person because you don't want to further share their name, but there's a very specific reason why I do. I am mentioning them because we need to know who his rumor, in, as far as we know, untrue or unverified to be true. We need to know who it's about. When you apologize, you need to like say exactly what you're apologizing for and who you're apologizing to. People need to know you're apologizing to Gary, the next Golden Bachelor. And 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 on, I mean, you know, you could defend it in the other way and say, no, he didn't want to make the situation worse. I say, say what you said and say why it's not true or say why it's not verified. I I am sure Allie got scolded. And I'm sure she got scolded behind the scenes, but I would have liked to see a little back and forth where they could have sort of talked, excuse me, talked about the process of why she felt like she could share it, why she realizes that isn't enough now in that thing moving forward, because it is a little dangerous. It was very sinister the way they talked about this man and all the cheating and he's a slime ball and he did this and they essentially said he got fired for a Me Too issue, none of which none of which anybody else has come out with and verified. If this happened and multiple people were made aware, you got to bet you got to bet if 10 people know about this that at least 4 of them are going to verify it. If he is a slime ball, that means people would not like him and they would want to uh, to confirm that he's not a slime ball. We see this happen with celebrities. When, once they're outed by one person, 10 other people come up and go, oh yeah, he did this and he did that. Jerry, uh, Gary's 71. He's lived long enough that he would have made enough enemies if this were the case. Now, it might still be true, but without all of those different factors, it should have never gotten aired or talked about and Nick's at least addressing it on his podcast here. Uh, It's also important to remember, if we go back to his original episode, that you can edit a podcast. You can totally, I'm going to show you guys right now what you can do. If you go to your account, and this is very basic information. Hold on one second, folks. This is very basic information what I'm going to show you. Any YouTuber in the world knows you can do this. So if I go to my last video right here, here's my, I just made a hometown recap video. I can literally go to, there's a button I can press um, uh, let's see over here, uh, edit title and description, uh, excuse me. And if you go into the video itself, you can clip out a part of the video. You can literally edit it out. Um, I don't know. There's a analytics, uh, editor here it is. So if you go to the editor, um, you can go down here, trim and cut, and you can literally pick and choose which part of the video you want to cut out. And then it takes a little while to process, but then it disappears. They should cut out that part of the video if they haven't already. I'm not checking it because I don't want to give any more clicks where they don't need to be. But anyway, that's my thought on that. So we are uh, happy to report it. It is important when these rumors come out that the reporting of the apology clearly states what they're apologizing for so people know that it's not true. My guess is about 20% of the people that heard the initial rumor won't do their research or won't hear the apology and they'll just think that that was the truth and this is going to be something that sticks with him as, well, maybe he's this bad guy, um, you know, and he can't possibly vindicate himself from a rumor that's faceless. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. We'll have more content coming your way right after this.